Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of Freestyle Talks. Uh, my name is Carlos. I'm your host. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm speaking from Maputo, Mozambique, in Africa. Uh, this is uh, Friday. We are in September. Uh, the year is almost over. And as always, we are very excited to bring you a, a very special guest, a very interesting talk to to inspire you and to push you to be better and be and do greater things with your life. And uh, we've been moving and jumping all over the world with guests from African countries. Our previous guest was from Ghana. We've been in the States, in Portugal, Brazil. So we are uh, fascinated with this opportunity to bring you uh, interesting people and interesting stories from all over the world. And, and this time is not an, an exception. Uh, we find, and we were thinking about this, that through these COVID times, a lot of people are feeling stuck. A lot of people lost jobs, occupations, or uh, find the privation of not being able to be free and to to be who they want to be and do what that they want to do. And we felt that it was very important, especially now, to bring uh, a profile and a guest that inspires us in a way that we can be whatever we decide to be. We don't have to fit in a box. We can explore ourselves and be, and be our true selves and live our lives as freely and as multi-dimensionally as possible because it's our life. So our guest is a very talented artist. Uh, she is versatile. She is a beautiful soul, very sensitive and, and an amazing work. And I think better than speaking or myself making an introduction i would like to invite you to watch a short video as a short video of one of her performances and then we'll call her to join us on the on the conversation so i'll see you soon and i hope you enjoy this beautiful video i'll see you now i was walking along absent-mindedly when suddenly i heard a little bell ring as though someone were trying to awaken me from the sleep of thousands of years. There we stood. She stuck still, blank face turned toward me, and I paralyzed. Nonetheless, I closely observed and studied the blind. does not exist. So this is just a short uh, clip of a, a beautiful performance, but I'm very anxious to start the conversation. So I will call uh, to join me, Xenia Kogan Amaru, 
Xenia, welcome to Freestyle Talks. Hi, Carlos. Nice, nice being here with you. Thanks for inviting. And uh, first of all, I, I'm admiring the initiative you you started a year ago, and uh, the what you are doing for the society worldwide. Because I, I believe that everyone now uh, needs this kind of a motivation support. It's a kind of a psychologist work what you are doing as well because uh, you you give uh, give the power inner power to people to to combat the times that we are living because this this pandemics brought uh, brought to us um, so many uh, desperate moments and so many questions in, in our life but those questions are also very good because uh, those questions made us think on actually what we are, who we are, from where we are coming, where do we go, and not only as a population, but as as, as every individual. So I, I'm sure that each each of you guys who is watching us now uh, had this uh, self questioning starting from uh, beginning of past year. And I'm sure that uh, it influenced that on uh, on your life uh, in a certain way, uh, as is it did. In fact, it did influence mine. No, and, and all I'm of us are going through the same things all over the world. So this pandemic, one one thing that it definitely made it that it made us all equal in that in that uh, being vulnerable and being exposed to the uncertainty of what's what's happening in the next times. And my work here is just to be a bridge, it's just really to, to make a connection, but the true stars and the true people who are making the difference are my guests. And I'm lucky to have amazing guests like you, who, you. who have amazing stories. You know, I've been uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, uh, actors and actresses, with entrepreneurs, with sports athletes, with uh, you know so many different professions and uh, comedians uh, and moms and dads and you know all kinds of people are have been a part of our uh, platform. But it's very special having you and having this topic to discuss with you. So. When we were exploring the topic for this conversation, we came up with a beautiful quote from Oscar Wilde. I will put it on the banner for two people to watch it. So to define is to limit. So Oscar Wilde, uh, he wrote this on the, the portraits of Dorian Gray. And this was a, a quote where the artist was asked to define his painting, the portrait of Dorian Gray. And he said that, you know, to define is to limit. It can be so many things. Uh, why do we have to put the label on it? Why do we have to, to have a tag to give it just one expression and one meaning? And this is what I think about you and your work. Uh, I'm truly inspired because uh, you started and you became famous as an international uh, pianist. And then you embraced new challenges. You are a singer as well. You are a performance artist. You are also a businesswoman uh, as a president of an aviation company. You, you are managing art galleries. So how can this Xenia Kogan Amaru one person be all these uh, different roles and different uh, and different types of of people in different environments. So I'm really curious and fascinated to to know more about you and about your way of being and and the way you approach those different ventures. How you deal with uncertainty, with fear, with the the challenges of um, not doing the same thing over and over again. Right. Um, you know, uh, 
first of all, of course, um, it's it's the first and main thing for me is the the belief in God. That's the first thing because He is given this energy, He's given this power to us, to me, and uh, having inner relationship with Him on a daily basis. It's it's just changing all. So that's where where I get my power is from the belief, you know, that He is watching me, He's leading me, and. Uh, he has given me all, so uh, it's very important. I, I believe for every every one of us, it's important to always remember: it's not just myself who did all that. It's not my parents. There was something much bigger. And following the gratitude to this bigger is the way also to continue. Is the way to to be. Is to be. Is the way to exist and and develop as the as the human being. And of course, as a personality, um, and then of course, <clears throat> when when we think more technical, let's say, uh, it's uh, it's uh, well, it's a big freedom uh, to to allow yourself to be whatever you want, whatever you can. It's it's the it's being brave to admit that there is something that you want and that you are ready, no matter what, to go for it. So this this two things that are braveness and the the, the freedom spirit. This is uh, these are the tools that are helping me to achieve the, the different goals, different things. Uh, they say Sonia né? to dream. So the dream, some, some people just really, uh, they are so much stuck in the daily routine, in the troubles, and every one of us has the troubles. Everyone has the challenges, troubles, uh, problems on everyday level, and none of us is protected or isolated from that. So we all do, but uh, those achieve who in spite of all those troubles and problems, still find some inner voice that says, no, there is something more that you can do. There is something more that you have the right to wish. So this, the inner voice that is always in building me and when I'm overwhelmed with some routine stuff, it just appears to me at certain points and says, look, there is something else. You need to to wish that you need to allow yourself to dream more. So we should never forget that we have this capacity to dream. And this gives us the biggest motivation to do because at the end of the day, what you dream is becoming your, your reality. It's just the matter how much, how desperately you want it and how much you're ready to do for it. And I think, I always think fear played a big role in in preventing people from living their true expression and their true lives and dreams. Uh, when you were starting as a pianist and you were already famous and had a reputation and had already a, a, an audience, were you not afraid of exposing yourself uh, to, to new things and and maybe it could fail. And was that not a problem for you? I will I will disclose right here with you. Uh, two or three um, secrets that I I discovered through all my pianistic career. I mean, I never were speaking honestly. I never spoke about this to, to anyone. And uh, since you are questioning me, I thought it's the moment to, to disclose. So in all my career as a professional concert pianist, I was struggling, as everyone does, in the, at least in the classical music, uh, fighting that, that fear. So you need to go on stage and you don't have to have that fear. But that bloody fear comes to you each concert, no matter how many thousands of concerts you played in your life, it comes every time. So with the time, I was testing so many um, 
different feelings, different preparation, self-preparation. Uh, I was reading different books to understand the psycholo psychology of this uh, this fear, but none of those books explained to me how, uh, in practice, I could really uh, go over it. And so there were a few things that really worked and then it worked again and again and then it became my habit. So then I'm not having uh, that fear or maybe just having sometimes a little bit, but not as before. So those, those, uh, those secrets, secret ways of doing it uh, are actually having to do with everyone's life and can, can be used in every in every uh, strategy, in every in every field, no matter if it's music or not, or completely something else. Um, so, is the moment first of all one of the strategy? Uh, so, you may imagine yourself in the years forward. So, basically, if when I was uh, a young girl and I had like a tournée, important tournée in Japan. And I thought, okay, so all these people are there, they're waiting for me, and I'm just so scared here. And if I come with this scare, they will feel that I'm scared. They will not like my music because that's not a good energy when you go and you're scared. So what happened is just I thought, okay, there is Martha Argerich, the, the pianist I really love and admire. She's one of the main women of the century. Uh, she achieved so much. And I thought, okay, when... So now she's Martha Argerich that we know, but let's go back. If she's 17 here, she needs to go on stage. So what's the difference? The difference is actually that with 17, she didn't know she would become Martha Argerich. So I just put myself in tw like 10 years, 20 years forward and, and said to myself, look, I am that bloody famous person. So what I'm doing here, like being so scared, it's so ridiculous. Just go and do it. Just give all that to these people. They deserve it because they want to hear that. So this moment, this energy, when I just imagine myself already famous, changed, changed all in me in that moment. And I could just go with completely different approach to the stage and, and give all my energy. The other thing that really works as well uh, it comes already with the psychology uh, uh, understanding that actually the fear is the negative energy. So if you put, uh, it's it's not the matter of me deciding which energy is stronger, but I mean, I believe in God. So I know that God is always stronger than evil. But even if you don't believe in that, in every psychology book, it's written clearly that the positive energy is stronger than the negative one. So I was thinking if the fear is the negative energy, I need to fight I, instead of just, you know, saying to myself, no, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because not is also negative. So you cannot say I'm not afraid because it's something you're not admitting and you are putting this not in there, which is bad. So I needed to, oh, uh, to pass another wave of huge positive energy to just to, to neutralize all the bad. And that's what I did. I I thought I need a, a lot of great energy. So what would be in my case if I go on stage and I'm afraid, what could be that big punch of great good energy? And actually this is the wish, the wish to go and do it, the, the wish to play. And if it was not coming to me automatically, what I was doing, I would put the music to here that has nothing to do with the classical music. Let's say I need to go and play Rachmaninoff. I need to go to play Bach, Chacon. It's uh, something very straight as a music. I mean, it's something very, very classical oriented. But what I was putting in my earphones, it was Diana Rhodes, when I tell you when, that I love you. Uh, it was flamenco music, depending which which energy I would need. Like if I needed some energy that is like really, you know, you go, you you go for it, you kill it, you like something very um, strong, aggressive. I would put flamenco, and I would listen it until my name was pronounced on the stage. I was there with this energy going. There was, believe me, no 
place, no leaving time, a little space left for the fear, because I was full, overwhelmed with this huge energy. And the Diana Rose singing all these huge songs that are, you know, they're destroying your soul and saying, just be happy, you know? And, and so much love coming from this, you know, when you tell me that you love me. So there is no place anymore for the fear. So this was my way to train, not to be afraid. But the daily fear uh, is, is different. The daily fear you are fearing, okay, I, I would like to be something, like I would like to be something different of what I am now, in, as an example. For example, you say, I want to be the actor, and but, you say, but, I have to feed my kids. I have my parents on my shoulders. I have someone in the family invalid. I need to help them. I need to feed them. How could how can I I can I have no right to be an actor. Okay, but you forgot one thing. You are the best in what you love. So you just need to give this little gap of of the uh, of the belief and of this of the moment to dedicate to that. And then you might become so important as an actor that you would never have those money with some, something else that you are doing today. And um, uh, this is the, the, the main bugs, let's say, that we need to always solve. You know, these this daily voices that say, no, you cannot do that. Oh, people will laugh at you because you're not trained in that. You've got, you've got an education of the pianist. How come you are going into the aviation? Yeah, you're crazy. You're not so, like... What do you know about visual art? Why would you be the gallerist? You cannot sing because you were not studying that. So there are so many things, of course, that pass through my through my uh, head as well when I was on my way, when I am on my way, and we never know what's going to come next. You know, um, I want to be an actress, and everything I do, I want to do it professionally, to do it the way I believe the things should be done. So it's not just a hobby. It's not just right now I'm doing that. No, it's, uh, I'm like assumir, no, in Portuguese, it's like to, to, to yeah, to, uh, to assume, no, to, to, to take the responsibility on that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> actually, uh, I learned that from, from my husband who is not a educated artist, visual artist, and he was educated in finance and in, in philosophy and other things but then he suddenly now he's he's making exhibitions all over the world in the great museums and i got to know him i thought oh my my god that's insane he didn't get the education like you know the russian mind you know you must follow all those rules before you can Call yourself an artist. <laughs> and then I come to Brazil, this wonderful country that I fell in love. And I see that there are so many artists that have nothing to do with their art education, but they are great artists, actually. And so as my husband, I, I've seen, oh, my God, he's just deciding to do something. He's doing that. And so here I learned something very important from him is you should never think on what others will think about that because who cares it's your life it's your life you live it today and if tomorrow you disappear because of covid or not because of covid or anything else it was your life and you had the right because god gave to each of us gave the right to live this life means he gave the right to choose he gave us the right to choose to be what we want to, and to decide what we are, what we want to become. And the most important actually is not to think, you know, when I was, now I have just recorded two great CDs of Bossa Nova singing. And I can tell you back in January, when I was in my uh, research, inner research that was saying, saying, uh, you are something more than what you are doing you need to take care of that you need to go for it and you need to actually research what is that so in my research i i realized okay this is what i want i i really want to sing i want to be a professional singer and it's never too late 
you know, there are fantastic Cabo Verde, uh, no? Cesare Evora. She's so old, but she's so fucking great. I'm sorry for the French. Uh, you know, we we should never think of this, you know, I'm too old for something. You know, how many, how many young actresses are in the Hollywood? But they would be nothing if there would be no other actresses that are 80, 90 years old, because without those, movie cannot happen. <laughs> simple, as, simple as that. So <clears throat> my uh, my thought in back in January this year, when this project was not even in my mind yet, I just said, I want to sing. And I want to sing Bossa Nova. And I have the reasons for that. Why Bossa Nova? Why Brazilian music? I will tell you later. Um, I just thought, I don't care if if it will be just for me, I will be the most happy person in the world. If people will embrace it and love it, I will be a hundred times happier. You know, it just doesn't matter. You just need to do what you love because you are the greatest in what you love. You know, and that's, that's very powerful. You are the, the best at what you love. That's a, a, an amazing quote. And one thing I also felt while watching your videos and researching for, for this conversation, uh, some people are, when you say, I am a pianist, I am a writer, I am an actor or an actress, and sometimes it is a profession, it is a job, and people are doing a job. What I felt watching you, that it is not a job, it's your nature. You are completely there. You are living that. I can feel your emotions in the keyboard, in your body, in your head, in your in your eyes. I could feel that. And that's how I knew she is an artist, not just a pianist, not just a singer. Uh, so Xenia has no labels. It's really impossible to put her on a box. And one thing I, I wanted to ask you was, um, when did you start to fell in love with music or feeling that connection to art? How did it start? Was it a family influence or was it your own journey and discovery? So take me through the beginning a little bit, please. Yeah, in my case, it was the family influence, but let's say a half passive influence. Um, first, it was passive and influence because my parents both are musicians, but they both came from the families with no musicians. So they were pioneers, and it was hard for the for the grandparents to accept it at that time. And because of the same, always same reasons, like oh, with music you don't gain money. Oh, what is that? So you're a musician. How can I say that to my friends? You know, in, in in old times it was even stronger than than today. Today we are much more open-minded. Uh, so they they really fought for that. They really wanted to be what they became, and they really did great both in in their lives. They are still young, and they are still doing great things. My mom is a composer and my father is the, the guitar player, but they they all do all, like they all do arrangements and they do, my, my dad does a lot of activities with different uh, groups and for different kind of music. He sings as well. My mom is a singer as well. She, she used to be a pianist, then she passed to be a composer and then she started singing, then she became a vocal coach of the pop singing. So, I mean, they are very, very versatile as well, um, very diverse. Uh, in my case, uh, when I was little, before, you know, uh, they were deciding at about six, seven years what, uh, which direction I would take. And they had different views on that. They were not, my mom wanted me in music. My dad wanted me like have more freedom. Let's say he said, oh, maybe she's dancing. Maybe she would go for cinema or theater, something like that. And I love all those ideas because this is what I, I'm doing my in my life. And I pretend to do more in my life. So anyways, they were always a good choice. But before that, uh, because kids are, uh, establish themselves much before that, so you know that. Um, it's by absorbing what your parents do 
and you can identify yourself whether it's yours or not whether you want to do something else or you want to follow their career their environment and i can tell you uh with three four five years old i was i was uh exactly in the environment that i came now so i was a lot in the studio recording like recording my mom's songs uh she also uh composed a lot of ch uh, children's music so at was five years old I could already perform those and so I was recording those till today I have those lovely recordings um, <clears throat> so I was uh, I was already performing uh, like singing in some concert halls with them uh, and I've, I've seen all those musicians around and all that influenced me so much because it was giving so much emotions uh, it's, it, this, this creates this freedom of emotions because in music as you know it's uh, uh, it flexibilizes your, uh, yourself so much because you need every moment to be different you know the music brings you from uh, sad to the drama from drama from dramatic to to melancholic then from melancholic to happiness and you need to live through that all your day with all these emotions and you need afterwards you need to not only be followed by these emotions but you need to create them in order to give this and transmit to the audience to the people that listen to you so uh the music came naturally through my family uh i can tell you um god it was i mean uh, I want to be modest, but it's not about me again. It's not. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's mine or it's my parents' uh, achievement. It is uh, the gift that God gave, and and I'm grateful because He was really generous to me. Uh, I believe He gave me a good head also to. That's why I'm succeeding to manage gallery to be the gallerist and there i'm not as creative i mean i am very creative there as well but i'm succeeding to be more you know a business mind and structured mind and aviation of course aviation is a pure dream you know it's it's a dream but it's very technical as well so um in in the story of my let's say it's my in my studies so many times i was upset with my mom mom why you gave me to this music i love working i would love to work in the office i i love papers i love you know i like like to calculate i, I like to you know receive uh, letters respond so uh things that are not directly connected to music but um it's like you know being a gemini which which i am is like to have so many different people in you <laughs> you have so many different women that are inside uh, and uh, i'm also time. a gemini yeah great nice meeting you that's that's why you liked me <laughs> because you recognize yourself probably so <clears throat> it's it's really fun to be gemini even now recording these cds this uh, bossa nova project uh, i said to the to, to the music producer i said look it's it's really great to be gemini to record that because in in the cd you have so many characters each song is so different and inside each song you have so many many atmospheres and so many uh, changes of the soul you know of the, uh, the changes of the of the, of the personage let's say so it's it's really it's nice to to be flexible in that of course and, and i also want uh, to translate to make a, a transition to the new cities who are coming and also the that impact of the, the brazilian culture i think is is obviously through your wedding and through love uh, of course but I can feel the Brazilian culture really uh, had an impact on you as an artist and as a woman and as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why also, uh, in a way, the the, the new, new CDs are uh, linked to a, a Brazilian heritage and culture. So tell me more about that and from you as a Russian woman, how it was to embrace a Brazilian culture. And if you can, I I would like to challenge you to maybe answer to this one in Portuguese or some parts of it in Portuguese, if you don't mind. 
All right, all right. Com muito prazer. <laughs> então, <coughs> actually, the, the Brazilian uh, music, I can say today that it's in my veins because uh, being a daughter of the uh, viol violinista, no? the, the guitar player, it was really very advantageous for me because when I was, since I remember myself like three years old, uh, my dad was playing guitar at night practicing and uh, it's uh, it's a shame now to say, but with three years old, I didn't know it was Brazilian music. I thought it was the music of my dad. And by the way, it was Garota de Ipanema. So the girl from Ipanema of Tom Jobim. And so this, you know, this, this uh, tan and tall and young and lovely, the girl from me, her name goes walking in. Uh, so this was the music that I thought was the creation of my dad. And there were all the musics also of Tom Jobim that he was practicing. And not only Tom Jobim, but Abraço no Bonfá uh, uh, and, and other guitar things. They were Brazilian, but I didn't know. It was the music that I loved because I loved my father. And uh, that was something that he was talking, uh, sorry, the, he was playing all the time at night with the little boy, you know, not to bother the, the neighbors. <clears throat> so later on, I discovered already was 15 years old. I discovered that actually this is not the music of my father, but it became so dear to me that I became a fan of this Brazilian bossa nova. And that was the music that I would always listen for myself on a daily basis. It would be music that relaxes me, that brings me joy, brings me um, good vibes. And um, not only the music, the Brazilian culture somehow entered into myself much earlier than, than I could ever meet my husband. I didn't know my husband would be Brazilian at the end. Um, so when I was little uh, in, in Russia, uh, we had this bunch of Brazilian novels, the, the series, the telenovels of Globo, uh, like the the slave is aura, escrava is aura, then mulheres de areia, the right, and so was was uh, Gloria Pires, que eu admiro tantíssimo. Uh, so I I was already immersed into this environment. It was very different from Russian environment, but I've seen myself there. I I was much in. Believe me, I was marching there much more than the in Russian environment, and everybody knew about that. So finally, when I brought my husband to my school, after now after like many years, it was celebration of 70 years of my school in Moscow, uh, music school. <clears throat> so when a teacher that was teaching me the how to accompany the singers, he uh, I, I introduced my husband. He said, "Oh, Brazilian." Now I understand. So that's much better for you because there you match <laughs> because I was not matching in Russia. And I, I'm, I'm super, I mean, I'm super patriot. I'm super patriot as a Russian person. I love Russian culture. I love Russian reality. I admire my country today the most. You know, I, I love Switzerland. I admire Switzerland, I love Russia. I'm so proud of the country, but I, I'm so much in love with Brazil. And and uh, this um, this integration into the country happened a lot through the novels that I've seen on the TV, and one of my goals also is to participate in one of the novels in Global right now. I mean, I'm finalizing my my CD. Uh, the singer maybe we would you know use this music for some novel. Maybe they would let me play something there. I would be very happy. Uh, so this this country came into my into my soul much earlier. I mean, since beginning. No, and once again, it comes to show us that we can love both countries and different cultures and still be the same person. Right. So it's who we are. It's our nature. It's to be multi-dimensional and open to what makes you happy. So I'm. I can totally relate to what you are saying. Uh, also, because if, if you allow me to share something, I grew up in 
I'm Mozambican, so I was born in my country in Mozambique, but I grew up in Portugal. Mm. So I, I left my country when I was five, and I've lived in Portugal until I was 22. So all of my childhood and teenage years, I've lived in Portugal. Now I'm back in Mozambique. Uh, but I cannot tell you uh, which country I, I'm more related with or where my, my personality fits better. I think it's a mix of both. And it's okay. So because once again, to define is to limit. We can be different things and still be who we are. And I think that's the, the beauty of being open to that, uh, that complex nature of our beings. Right. You know, in, in this regard, I really have very strong I mean, conviction since beginning, since childhood. I was so desperate to travel all, all over the world and living in different places. I knew since beginning that it would be like that, and it was. Um, that I was always saying, you know, why to eat just one piece of cake if they gave you all? So if they give you entire, so that's my perspective, that if God gave us the globe, why we are stuck in one place, why we are fighting for this or that and saying which one is better and which one is mine and not, he gave us all. So live it, enjoy it, explore it. So, so it's so natural to love different countries because it's just part of the same thing that God gave you. Just you had to be born in some place and not the other because you cannot be born in every, right? So um, this is the global global mind, I think. The global today, is, it's, it's very actual. But it, I mean, it's eternal. It's always had to be like that, I believe. Would no. be less worse. <laughs> I totally understand that. Uh, look, I have a feeling that I I would really love to to wait for the CDs to come out, and I can make also a prediction about maybe a an actress, a Xenia actress coming soon. <laughs> so I can expect uh, interesting news from your side. And I would like to really take this opportunity to invite you for a second interview, a second talk here at Freestyle Talks when you have some new projects. Uh, you are a fascinating character and artist, and I would really love to know more and to share with our audience know more about your work and new and new things coming out. And I hope you, you accept our invitation. <laughs> and I really love to make it happen uh, and you are our first guest from russia so that's also a, a very special a, a milestone in our calendar as we are making a, a checklist of countries so russia is already a check in our, in our I'm, uh, I'm also belgian because I, I have a double nationality so i can so do both also belgian <laughs> double check double check but no, I, I'm, I'm really happy you, you've you accepted to talk to us. I mean, just seeing you on stage with John Malkovich and now you are here talking with me, it means a lot. And you are uh, a true artist and an amazing person more than, than anything else. And I want to also invite my audience to follow your Instagram page. So Xenia Koganamaru on Instagram and to visit Muito bem. Português, <laughs> português ou inglês ou russo ou belga. Francês. Sete, sete línguas, é, também serve ah, então. também, também serve croata, italiano, espanhol. Ah, então, podem escrever para a Xenia e visitar o, o website também, uh, xeniacogan.com which has uh, so many information about her journey, her career, and pictures, and recent uh, interviews. So I really just wanted to, to thank you for making the time and accepting our invitation. We are a small platform, in, and we are very distant, far away in Mozambique, and having you here means a lot, and, and you are an amazing person. Muito obrigada. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Carlos. It was really great pleasure participating and, and having this this actually sincere, honest talk to you. And Thank to you. all of us, of course. Thank and you. we'll stay tuned to follow your work because I know a lot of good things are coming. So we'll be waiting and we will invite you again for sure. With great pleasure, I accept. Thank you, Xenia. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So this was the amazing Xenia Kogan Amaro, uh, an amazing person, an amazing artist, uh, a multi-talented and versatile uh, woman, and who sh who showed us and inspired us that really we can do so many things and we can be whoever we want. This is our life, and to quote we are the best at doing what we love and that's one powerful quote I'll take from this talk and uh, definitely keep doing uh, more of these conversations more of these uh, talks and bringing you more guests so if you are new to our platform make sure to subscribe and to be aware of the new projects we have and the next guests and also follow our guests once again, uh, check her Instagram and also the website and you can find it in the bottom of our screen. And we will see you soon. As always, we go live on Fridays. So subscribe to be alert and uh, stay safe as always. So thank you and I'll see you soon. <laughs>